Hello, I'm Luca Torix, and today we are ranking the Hellenic factions. Yes, we're going to be discussing four factions today. We've already ranked the Roman factions, we've already ranked the Barbarian factions, and today we're going to be going around this kind of region. And like I said, there are four factions we're going to be focusing on. First of all, of course, the Greek cities. They're spread out over a rather large area, a rather fragmented empire. Actually, the most fragmented empire in the whole game. Very interesting faction. Um, I do like the Greek cities quite a lot indeed. Then next door, we have the Macedonians, which are a quote-unquote unplayable faction, but you can unlock them very easily using data files. They're a little bit north of the Greeks, so we're going to be discussing them as well. We're also going to be discussing the Thracians, which again is a unplayable faction, but they're over here, just south of Scythia, a little bit west of, sorry, east, my, my compass skills aren't very good, a little bit east of Dacia. And finally over here, the Seleucids, this very interesting faction, probably the most difficult faction to play as in the game. So we're going to be approaching this from two perspectives, which is the unit roster that the armies have, you know, potentially capable of fielding, and also their position on the campaign map in terms of tactics and that kind of thing. So let's get straight into it by first ranking them in terms of their unit roster. Let's go. And at number four, we're starting off with Thrace. Now, I want to say before I do this, actually, I think all four of the armies are pretty strong. I think that, you know, they've got their slight weaknesses maybe, but they're certainly not the most terrible of armies. So it's pretty close between all four factions. But for me, Thrace has to come at number four. It is the most unique army of the four, certainly, and it is the least spear-based, I would say. Uh, it also is the smallest unit roster. You can see not a huge amount of options, and bear in mind, really, you've got to discount the Illyrian mercenaries because they're mercenaries, so you can't recruit them. This is pretty much all you've got. So let's just go through quickly uh, what I think about this army. Now, really, at the very early game, you're probably going to be relying on militia hoplites, but that's not really a great idea. Their poor morale just means they won't last for long, even though they're spearmen uh, and they can form a phalanx. Really, a charge in the back of the side and they're just going to be gone straight away. Even from the front, they're not going to really last for long, uh, particularly against normal hoplites that the other factions might have. Now, they do have some slightly better infantry. For example, the Falksmen, and I do rate Falksmen quite a lot, quite a hardy unit, 13 and 10 attack and defense respectively, and good morale. It is quite a hardy army. It is a little bit more of the barbarian style, but just to make it clear, the Thracians are considered Hellenic in culture in this game. Now, we do move on to slightly better uh, pikemen, which is uh, slightly different to hot pikes because they have very long spears. And again, certainly not a bad unit, but some of the units of spearmen and pikemen we're going to be seeing later on are far, far superior to what the Thracians can field, which is why I can't put the Thracians up there with the likes of Macedon and Greece. And finally, in terms of infantry, we've got the Bastani. The Bastani are really excellent, in fact. Uh, good morale, a very offensive unit, not the most amazing on defense, but their two hit points mean they ex they essentially have two health bars, which means that although, yeah, they forgot to bring a top into battle, actually, they're going to last for a while purely because their health bar is ridiculously high. So in terms of the infantry, not terrible, but in the early game, really, you know, the militia hoplites, I, I don't rate at all. It get As you go along, the Spearman is decent, but nowhere near as good as the other factions. They do have some pretty hardy units of Forksmen and Bastani, but for me, they haven't got the variety, they haven't got the defensive potential of the other factions. That's why I can't, in that respect, put them up there. And then in terms of cavalry, we've got the very basic Greek cavalry, obviously the bodyguards and the militia cavalry. This is a weakness of Thrace, is the cavalry. There is no real strong unit of heavy cavalry apart from the general's bodyguard, which obviously you can't recruit. And you'll be looking at the other factions in a minute. There are examples of much better cavalry. Thrace doesn't really hold up in that respect, and that's why... Yeah, I, I can't put Thrace up there with the rest, but they do have some some solid units. I do very much respect the Bastani. I think that this is a better faction than a lot of the Barbarian factions, but for me, they don't quite stand up to the Hellenic factions purely because their spearmen just aren't amazing, and there's not a lot of diversity, not a huge amount of options. I do like that light colour blue, though. It looks very, very nice. At number three, and it loathes me to say it, it really loathes me to say it, but I think it is the Greek cities. Might be a little bit controversial because they have one or two really, really strong units, particularly those guys in red, the Spartan Hoplites. But for me, it's, it's, it's really close between these three factions, and I was thinking about it for a while, but the main weakness, again, of the Greek cities is their cavalry. Uh, fairly similar, actually, in fact, to the Thracians. They haven't got a lot of good cavalry other than the general's bodyguard. And that is a weakness of them comparatively 
to the Seleucids and the Macedonians. But let's start off with the infantry first. Again, in the early game, we're going to be starting off with the likes of Militia Hoplites, which we've just discussed are pretty poor. And their late game spearmen, the Armoured Hoplites and the Spartan Hoplites, are really excellent. Spartan Hoplites are ridiculously OP, excellent morale, 17 defense, 2 hit points, which we've already discussed is a a very good stat to have. Spartan Hoplites will just fight forever. If you want to defend a point, one unit of Spartan Hoplites can just clog up a whole street from a million different units of the opposition. Uh, so a very, very strong unit indeed. And from this perspective, it certainly looks quite good. Certainly their late game spearmen are very excellent. But for me, again, the Archer Fire is certainly lacking which, like I said, is a commonality. They're going to be relying on the Cretan archers more, but really they shouldn't be here because they can't be recruited uh, in-game. But these archers are just very, very average, and the skirmishers the same. You know, the heavy peltas are okay, actually, but it, it's, it's generally pretty average. And then we move on to the cavalry, and it just gets even worse. There's no real excellent option of cavalry. We've got the standard light cavalry, which isn't going to do much, and then the general's bodyguard, and then again the skirmisher cavalry. So, for me... The only reason, really, the Greeks are above the Thracians is because of the of a couple of really excellent units of hoplites. But, again, the thing with the infantry is it's not particularly diverse. This is a very, very defensive army, and if you want to play offensively, you can't really use the, as the Greeks. At least with the Thracians, you can charge forward with the Bastani and the Forksmen. They're fairly manoeuvrable. They, they like to charge forward. The hoplites are just going to stand their ground point their spears and hope people charge into them. I played a campaign as the Greek cities and every battle was very, very defensive, which is fine, but it means that you have a lack of diversity in choosing what tactics you can do. Next up at number two, we have Macedon. I feel like this list is gonna be quite controversial and I like to say just very quickly, the thing with ranking the, these factions like that is, is actually very subjective. I realized this when making the last video. It very much depends on what kind of tactics you like and so on and so forth. So try not to hate me too much, but I am going to put Maston at number two, um, which will be very interesting to see what people think. Now, first of all, why do I put Macedon above Greece? Well, the main reason is the spearmen, I would say actually the spearmen slash pikemen are slightly worse for Maston. Now, it is cool that the pikemen of Maston have these very, very long spears. It creates more separation between them and the, the attacking unit, which is really cool. And some of the higher units of Royal Pikemen are really quite decent. You know, good morale, 17 defense. These are going to do a very solid job. And also um, a large amount of men in each unit, 121 on standard unit size is pretty decent. That means that there's going to be a lot more of them, a lot more of them to take down. But actually, I think the early game army of Maston is a little bit overrated. Again, the, the goddamn militia hot plights, they always like to hang around with their poor morale and eight defense. These guys really aren't that good. And then you move on to levy pikemen. Now, it is, again, cool they have these very long spears, but levy pikemen actually have poor morale as well. So, again, the early game really isn't that amazing. I think with Greece, it is quicker to tech up to a decent level of spearmen than it is with Maston in my experience. You only need one upgrade to get up to the normal level of hot plates. For me, Levy, Pikeman, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not 100% sold on them. Um, but these two units are decent. But again, Phanax Pikemen haven't got good morale, so they're going to be more average than you actually think on a very hard difficulty. The Royal Pikemen certainly are good. So as you can see, first of all, the Macedonian cavalry has a much wider range. Not a huge amount of cavalry like the Scythians or anything, um, but certainly better than we've seen previously with the Thracians and the Greeks. At the beginning, yes, we got the pretty average light Greek cavalry, whatever, but pretty quickly you can take up to light lancers, and considering they're only light cavalry, the fact they have good morale is actually pretty decent. So yeah, as you can see, this is a pretty damn solid unit already, the Macedonian cavalry, which you can get fairly early on in the game as well. Uh, then of course you have the general's bodyguard and whatever, and then finally the companion cavalry, again a really really good unit. These cavalry units are vastly superior to the Greeks we've just discussed, and this is the reason why I put Macedon slightly ahead of Greece. Yes, maybe their pikemen isn't quite as good as the Greek spearmen, but to be honest, the, the higher level ones are pretty damn decent indeed. They'll do a solid job, and their very long spears actually is advantageous uh, comparatively to the Greeks. But for me, the vast superiority of the cavalry is what makes Maston a lot more diverse and overall better than Greece. So yeah, as much as it pains me to say it, because I do like the Greek cities quite a lot, Actually, I think Maston has the more diverse army, particularly because they can afford to be more offensive with their cavalry. The Greek cavalry really isn't going to do that much. So that's why I'm going to put Maston in second place. And in first, I'm actually going to put the Seleucid Empire, which I don't know what the sort of public's perception of the actual Seleucid army is. 
but I feel like this could be very, very controversial. There's quite a few fans of Mastodon out there, and the Seleucid Empire is quite often the butt of many, many jokes, considering their poor starting position, which we'll discuss later. And it's very rare that the Seleucids are put number one of any list, but in my list, I'm actually going to put the Seleucid Empire number one. Now, yes, at the beginning, their army is fairly weak, and that's why early on in campaigns, the Seleucids can be completely trampled over by other factions. You know, once more, we have the Militia Hoplites, poor morale. Again, the same pretty average missile troops, so that's pretty much broad across all four factions. But for me, it's the diversity of the Seleucid army that actually puts them above all else. I feel like the Greek and Macedonian army are fairly linear. We've discussed the Macedonian army is a little bit more diverse, but honestly, not the most diverse army in the whole game. The Thracians are very, very offensive. They're more barbarian in their style. They're going to be charging forward and whatever. But actually, neither of those three factions can do both. And for me, that the Seleucids can because they've got the pikemen, they've got the long spears, but they've also got the legionaries. And the legionaries are really, really cool. This is more kind of a Roman style thing. 9 attack, 22 defense and 13 missiles. They've got the advantage of a little bit better missile attack which is better than anything the other factions can, can field in terms of infantry that can fire missiles. But also good morale. This is quite a flexible unit and it means that you can afford to be a little bit more defensive if you need to. Let's say defending a city or defending a, a bridge or whatever with the pikemen. But you can be a little bit more offensive with the legionaries and behave maybe a bit more like Romans. In terms of the cavalry as well, actually really quite a large amount of cavalry options. Again, you've got the pretty basic Greek cavalry that are just going to be light and whatever. Uh, you've got the general's bodyguard, but the, the Seleucids have access to companion cavalry as well. And people go on about, you know, Macedonians have uh, good cavalry, they have better cavalry compared to the Greek cities, and sure they do. But the Seleucids also enjoy the same benefits as the Macedonians do as well. And again, cataphracts, which is kind of a more eastern thing, are really, really overpowered. 23 defense, good morale, very, very well armored. It's very tough to take these guys down. This is a real excellent unit. A charge bonus of 9 means they can be an excellent unit of shock cavalry. I think really a, a lot more flexibility actually uh, in terms of their units, even with their cavalry comparatively to the Macedonians. They also had side chariots. Side chariots are not my favourite thing in the world, but they can cause a huge amount of damage in a very short amount of time. Yes, they can be a little bit unruly and run amok or whatever, um, but you know, situationally can be an excellent unit. And then, you know, they've got elephants as well, which, okay, I know I made a video the other day trashing elephants and making fun of them, but again, situationally can be an excellent unit of shock cavalry. So, yes, you're going to have a tough time in the beginning as the, uh, as the Seleucids, but in my opinion, if you tech up quickly, in time, actually, this can be by far the most flexible and diverse army of the four. Yes, they haven't got any really, really overpowered units, except for maybe the Cataphracts, but overall, as an entire unit roster, I would take the Seleucids above any of the, f the other three factions. I think it's definitely above Maston because they've got basically the same infantry, but even better cavalry. So that's my logic. I don't know if people are going to agree or disagree with me, and I'll be very interested to see what people think. But yeah, for me, oddly enough, the Seleucid Empire is going to be number one in this respect. Okay, so now we've discussed the unit rosters with Thrace coming in at number four, the Greek cities at number three, Macedon at number two, and then, oddly enough, number one, the Seleucids. We're now going to go on to the tactics, their place on the battlefield, because their starting positions in Rome Total War is actually a very, very important part of the game, and I've got a feeling the Seleucids are not going to be number one for this. Let's just put it that way, so I'll see you in a few seconds. Okay, so at number four, rather unsurprisingly, in terms of their position on the campaign map, is the Seleucids. And it's weird, because I just put them number one in terms of the unit roster. But, yeah, they do have a very tricky starting position. And if you've played Rome Total War, you'll notice, as the AI, really, the Seleucids pretty much never do very well. They get feasted on by a variety of factions that surround them. They have the Pontics to the north, the Armenians, the Parthians, and the Egyptians, which is one of the strongest factions in the whole game, to the south. So really they're surrounded by some pretty damn tough factions. And not only that, but their empire is spread out over a pretty large distance. They've got a rather long and thin empire. We've got from Sardis, you know, over here, all the way over to sort of the Babylonia region uh, where Seleucia is. And it makes it very, very tough. I discussed a long time ago in my Seleucid faction guide how difficult this starting position is. Yeah, it's not maybe the worst economically positioned place in the whole world because you've got access to the Mediterranean coast and all of that. 
and you know you've got pretty near access to Egypt which is one of the more profitable regions of the game but the problem is you could just be at war with so many factions early on you could be at war with three four factions on multiple different fronts that really your your army is going to be spread very very thin and that's tough and also of course given the large distance between Sardis and Seleucia the entire empire it means that moving armies around is pretty tough their army isn't necessarily bad we just discussed in my opinion it's the best of the hellenic factions but the problem is tactically on the campaign map you're gonna have a really tough time you start off with only 3,000 denarii which considering the size of your empire and the fact that you're going to be needing to mobilize for war pretty much straight away that's not really a huge amount of money either some very strong factions around so yeah what i will say with the seleucids is if you do well in the early game if you manage to sort of solidify your empire tech up be nice and defensive and start to get a little bit of a foothold in the east then actually it can be a very very strong faction i think that really the seleucids is an example of a faction where it very much depends on the player's ability how good they are at the game if a player is really really bad at the game they don't stand a chance as, Seleuc uh, as the seleucids but later on maybe if you've had a bit of experience of the game and you're a strong competent player actually you can do a really good job because you've got access to a large amount of territory not a terrible economic position but the fact is really the other factions are just in better tactical positions in my opinion and for that reason i'm going to put the seleucids at number four so next up at number three we have thrace now thrace doesn't have a terrible starting position by any means but for me it is the it is probably the weakest of the remaining factions um, they have a nice centralized empire but saying that they only have two settlements campus getai and tylis and it's just not in the most profitable region of the whole world i discussed last time in my comparing the barbarian factions that this area of the world just really isn't that special sure you have access to the black sea but really that can't be compared to the lucrative state of the mediterranean so so yeah economically it isn't really that prosperous and sure you can go down south towards the mediterranean pretty easily but you are going to have to fight through the macedonians the greeks and probably by that time the bruti as well so you're going to have to sacrifice quite a lot it's a little bit tricky uh, to actually get a foothold on the Mediterranean Sea and start making some serious cash. And that's why I think actually, in terms of the economy, really the potential in this region compared to the other factions, you know, the Seleucids are in sort of like modern day Turkey and the other two factions in modern day Greece, Macedonia. Really, this area though, it hasn't got a huge amount of potential to be profitable. I don't think this is a horrible starting position. In terms of the neighboring factions, the Scythians aren't going to be a huge threat. Possibly they'll send an army from Campus Scythi down to get you but bear in mind if the Scythians are actually attacking a city or a town or whatever they're not actually going to be that useful don't bother fighting the Scythians in the open field it really isn't worth it the Dacians really aren't that strong at all I discussed last time in my comparing the barbarian factions how the Dacians in my opinion are the weakest faction uh, of this of, in, in this kind of region so yeah they're not a threat at all the only threat really is getting down to the Mediterranean Sea and that can be a little bit tough fighting through these two factions it is pretty cool to take byzantium quickly that is a good idea though so yeah to sort of summarize thrace i'm going to put it above the seleucids because particularly for early game players it's going to be a lot easier than fighting the seleucids purely because you're not surrounded the factions nearby are easier you know you're not going to, have to be dealing with the annoying egyptians or anything um, uh, but also you know the economy isn't really that great comparatively to Macedon and greece and that's why certainly i cannot put it above those two factions at all Okay, at the number two position, I'm going to put the Greek cities. And I thought long and hard about this. And actually, comparing the Greek cities and Mastan is a little bit tough because I think for experienced players, if you're very, very experienced, actually the Greek cities have the better starting position. But I think for the average player, if you're, you've are you been playing the game for a little while or whatever, then it would be Mastan, which we're going to discuss in a second. The difficulty with Greece is actually fairly similar to the difficulty of the Seleucids, which is their empire spreads over a sort of large, long, thin area, which means that you could potentially be at war with three or four factions pretty early on. You know, this is the most fragmented empire in the whole game, and it's not even close because there are sort of three separate land masses that you're going to be fighting on. First of all, over here in modern day Sicily, you've got Syracuse, you're boarding, you're bordering the Carthaginians and the Scipii from the get go. The Romans are fairly aggressive, the Scipii are the least aggressive of the three Roman factions, but still they're likely going to be gunning for you, and there's a possibility the Carthaginians could be doing exactly the same as well, meaning that Syracuse can be really in threat pretty early on. 
and taking out the nearby factions isn't too easy, uh, particularly if you're not experienced. Then you're going to be fighting over here in the sort of Greek mainland against the Macedonians and potentially the Brutii as well. So you could be facing two Roman factions pretty early on, which is actually rare for this game because they spread in three different directions. But the Greeks are one of the unlucky factions where they could potentially be facing two Roman factions at a pretty early stage. And then also you've got Pergamum on the what is now modern day Turkey, Anatolia. Uh, landmass and you could be facing the Seleucids which we've already discussed aren't that amazing but still a little bit tricky because you could be at war with potentially another faction. Now the good thing about the Greek starting position is first of all the economy which is why I put it above Thrace because their economic potential is far far greater. All the settlements are on the Mediterranean coast. You're going to be getting ports pretty quickly and the sea trade is going to be banging pretty quick which is which is very nice something the Thracians cannot boast about. The Greeks are in excellent position to take Cadonia as well. Sure, it's rebel territory at the beginning of the game, but very quickly you can take it. There's a boat in Rhodes, quick army, take it nice and easily, very good. And the good thing about Cadonia is, of course, once again, it's on the Mediterranean coast, uh, but also the, the purple dye and all of that makes it a hugely profitable settlement. It is notorious for being a big money maker, and the Greeks are in prime position to take that. And also all these settlements like Sparta and Rhodes have pretty good trade anyway. But yeah, the Greek starting position is certainly very interesting. And I think if you're an experienced player, you can actually do very, very well as the Greeks. Really, you have the potential to expand in three different directions very, very quickly and take a large portion of the map. Because if you are capable of taking Sicily with one army, you can start expanding over here. You can start expanding over here as well in Greece. And you can, you can start expanding in Turkey. And what that means is you can have wars on three different fronts. If you're winning those three wars, large amount of territory very, very quickly. And this is a faction where it's got huge potential if you're very good at the game. So, you know, and that's something I tried to do in my Greek cities campaign quite a long time ago. But I wasn't 100% successful. But once I got rolling, the Greek cities are in great position just to swarm the, the Mediterranean make a lot of money and do very, very well. But for me, I'm going to discuss why the Macedonian starting position, in my opinion, is better uh, in just a second. And finally, we have, of course, at number one, the Macedonians. Phylozora, Thessalonica and Larissa, three settlements, three pretty decent settlements. They're decent sized as well. Oh, sorry, and Corinth. I'm a bit of an idiot. Four settlements, in fact, even better. And of course, how could I forget Corinth? There's something very important about Corinth, which we'll discuss in a second. Well, you're kind of set up near the Mediterranean coast, so you've got a pretty decent economy early on. 5,000 denarii, which is more than the Thracians, and definitely in terms of money, they are easily better than the Thracians. Why do I put them above the Greeks? Well, they just have a bit of an easier time. Really, from the north, there isn't a huge amount of threat. Possibly the Thracians, but really, I don't think they're going to be too much of a threat. The Dacians certainly aren't a threat. They have no infantry that can stand up to your pikemen. Really, they're, they're not a threat. Sure, you've got the Brutii over here, but the Greeks, we've just discussed, have to deal with two groups of Romans. You only have to deal with the Brutii, so that's okay. And also, you're going to be sharing the sort of brunt of the Brutii force with the Greek cities, which is pretty good. So, they're in a nice position in terms of tactics. They also have good access to Athens, but of course, so do the Greeks. But prime position to take Athens, which is one of the bigger cities. I think it might even be the first proper city in the whole game. It certainly is a, a pretty good place to take early on and pretty easy to take because it's controlled by the rebels. But very, very importantly, the Macedonians have access to Corinth which in turn means they have access to the statue of Zeus at Olympia, a wonder of the world, which is a plus four bonus to population loyalty in all settlements. And a lot of people, particularly beginners, struggle with population loyalty, particularly as the game goes on, the settlements get bigger. And what this means is you don't have to, you can tax them higher so you can get even more money and the, the, the empire is going to be happier. There's not going to be rioting and so on and so forth. It's a very, very strong wonder of the world and also the reason why I put the Greeks and the Macedonians at the one and two spots is because most of the wonders of the world are kind of in this general region and the wonders of the world are really great. Over here this is where most of the wonders of the world are and you know the Seleucids and the Thracians don't have access to them so that's another point I just wanted to make but for me in the early game the Macedonians just have a more centralized empire if you are a beginner or even a sort of like medium great player it's going to be a lot easier in my opinion to win the campaign as the Macedonians compared to the Greeks purely because you're not spread out over a large distance you haven't got all the problems which the Seleucids share but also you've got the benefits of a good economy 
wonders of the world and all that. You're in prime position. A little bit tricky to take out Sparta maybe, but turn one isn't even that well defended. And actually I find it fairly easy to take out the Greeks because the AI suffers from the same problems that a human player would suffer. The fact is they can't move armies easily. You know, you can't get from Pergamum to Termon that easy. And if you do move your army from, let's say, Pergamum to Termon, then you're leaving that settlement vulnerable. So a good northern frontier, good economic potential, and the easiest time taking out the nearby factions. Sure, the Bruti are a little bit difficult, but the Greeks have it worse. So yeah, just to summarize in terms of the tactical positions, we have Seleucids at number four, the Thracians at number three, the Greeks at number two, and the Macedonians at number one. This, of course, leaves me to conclude the video by answering the question, which is which is the best Hellenic faction overall, considering everything we discussed. And, well, this is tough. It's really tough because the thing is with the Seleucids, it's, it's hardest to rank the Seleucids, in my opinion, because the Seleucids start off in a really difficult position. But if you can just survive that little bit of time, actually, they can become a really, really strong faction. I'm not going to put the Seleucids above the Greeks and the Macedonians because... For me, they just have too many disadvantages in the early game. It's tough for me whether to put the Thracians above the Seleucids or the Seleucids above the Thracians. But the way I'm going to look at it is, if I was starting a campaign, which faction would I be more confident playing as? Which faction do I think I would have the easiest time in winning the grand campaign with? And for me, it would be the Thracians over the Seleucids. So for that reason, I'm going to put the Seleucids at number four. But I will say they have the potential to be arguably the strongest faction of the four. But... I would say for the average general player, the Seleucids are probably the weakest faction purely because they have such a tough time in the early game that you're very likely just to crumble in the early few turns. And number three, I'll put the Thracians. Certainly not a terrible faction and better than the Barbarian factions, but their army just isn't as technologically good as the other two factions that we haven't discussed. And also their starting position is a little bit weaker. And number two, I'll put the Greek cities because they have a pretty damn solid army, certainly some very OP units like the Spartan Hoplites, but their starting position is very fragmented. It can be tough. And at number one, for the average player, I'll put the Macedonians. Very solid starting position, very solid army. They are just sort of more reliable and compact than the other three. So I will put the Macedonians at number one. But I'll certainly be very interested to see what you guys think. Could be a little bit of controversy with particularly the way I've discussed about the Seleucids. And maybe some of you will be thinking that I have disrespected the Greek city. So let me know uh, in the comments. I'll be very, very interested to see. But I'll be back with more videos like this very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around.